I'm Monique Saltani. I'm a wine expert, a journalist, and I'm thirsty for life. This is Wino TV. Sometimes wine's under 30 or scary. Yeah, sometimes wine's under 10 or really scary. You only find out the next day after you finished them. We're culture. We kind of want to remind everybody that Napa is open for business. We thought that the town had been probably destroyed or was going to be dirty and people wouldn't be here, but it's just as beautiful as ever. And agriculture. Smoke can be really damaging earlier in the season. It's almost less damaging uh, at the time of harvest. Come together. We had made the plans before the fires. I was actually kind of surprised myself to see how clean and happy everything is. Although we did see where people lost scrapes and some buildings, and so we got to see what's been going on, but uh, a lot of what we want is still here. Everything we want is still here. Keep supporting Napa and Sonoma and let everybody know that it is open for business. I am here in downtown Napa at their latest hotspot called Compline. We kind of want to remind everybody that Napa is open for business. There's a lot of hustle and bustle, a lot of activity. Talk about this area that we're in right now. So so we are in the heart of First Street Napa, which is a new development here in downtown. It's anchored by Archer Hotel, which is our neighbor. Charlie Palmer Steak is opening in a couple of weeks as their anchor restaurant. We've got a number of other things that are kind of springing to life right around us. So we're at the heart of the development. We're super excited to be a part of this. What I love about what you guys are doing is if you're someone who like knows nothing about wine, you're like a total novice, or you're like, you consider yourself a bit of a know-it-all, you guys kind of offer something for everyone. So Matt, why don't you tell us about the classes that you offer for maybe tourists that come to town that don't know a lot about the Napa Valley. So the idea for Jumpstart is that we want to teach people kind of the foundation, the building blocks of their own wine appreciation. We want to give them these kind of objective tools that they can take to every winery visit that they uh, go to later in the day. Uh, and they can really start to learn what they like and dislike. They're, they can learn their own palates. And what would be a tip maybe for someone at home who's watching to learn about, like, oh, well, to know what their palate is or what they might like if they don't know anything about it? You know, I think often wine education focuses too much on aromatics, you know, and you go and you have these sensory classes and you talk about the wine smelling like passion fruit or cinnamon or any sort of uh, things. I think people should pay a little bit more attention to the way the wine feels and tastes, you know, the body and the weight of the wine, where the acidity is in the wine, how, how grippy or soft the tannins are, things like that. I think people learn a lot more about what they like and dislike. That's really interesting. See, we got some good tips from you. I knew that was just like one of many that I'm sure if you come here, you'll learn. Uh, and Ryan, what about the, because you guys kind of do um, a world, a wines of the world type of class. What, what are people going to get from that class? Well, first and foremost, it's uh, one of the only master sommelier-led classes that, that's available to the, to the um, open public. And what you get from that is a, a little bit more dialed-in focus on a specific topic. Like our first one was uh, uh, wines of the island of Santorini. The idea of tasting some wines that you're probably not going to see in the market, probably uh, not going to be able to you know, go out and buy eight bottles of Greek wine and find it anywhere to sit down and enjoy. But an hour and a half long uh, presentation and discussion about the wines, tasting through the wines, understanding adding not only the wine but the history of the area and really dialing in more information so it's definitely for the wine interested the wine aficionado somebody who uh, cares a little bit more about their experience and exploring something new of course we have dinner running throughout the whole uh, process as well so it just has been this beautiful convivial atmosphere of education and, and enjoyment of Compline at the same time you got to tell me how'd you guys come up with the name Compline because I bet you guys want to say Compline people yeah. want to say Compline but it's Compline so Compline, it, it's derived from a, an old Latin word that indicates the completion of the working day. So um, Compline is, is the last monastic hour when monks would congregate before going their separate ways to bed. And, uh, you know, monks were responsible for bringing uh, uh, wine growing up the California coast. They were really responsible for uh, sort of shepherding wine growing through the Middle Ages in Europe. So it's kind of our tip of the hat to our forebears. We sort of reimagine the, the hour of Compline, if you will, as, as a time when our visitors to the valley, the wine trade, locals can all kind of get together after dark at Compline for a glass of wine, a bite of food. The monks are now coming in. We're totally geeking out here, you guys. Um, you've got two great wines here for us, a red and a white. The white wine we have is the, the 2016 Massacan Sauvignon Blanc, made by a dear friend of ours, Dan Petrovsky. He has uh, always had a passion for white wines of, um, of northern Italy, uh, Freeland and, and um, in this case uh, Sauvignon and found a beautiful old vineyard uh, planted in uh, 1993 so at, at this point you know uh, 25 plus years old vineyard of Sauvignon Blanc that just produces this 
nice and tense and structured style of Sauvignon Blanc. You tripped me out when you said 1993 and you referred to it as that being like a long time ago. I was like, oh God, I guess I'm aging rapidly. For a vine. For, for a vine. vine. Not for people. Not for people. All I just got hung up. 1993, boy, that's real old. The, the term old in vines is actually a compliment. If you say old vines, that's yeah. a good thing. No, yeah, no, I, know. I, I kid with you. I'm giving you a hard time. And tell us about the red map. Sure, it's the White Rock Vineyards 2014 Napa Claret. And this is a wine that's made uh, sort of inspired by the classic Bordeaux blend Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, partner grapes. White Rock is, is a family project here on the southeastern side of Napa Valley. Uh, Christopher Vandenrisch is the winemaker. His brother tends the vineyards and his parents uh, for, first uh, developed the winery back in 1977. And, uh, unfortunately, it, it, it's a winery that suffered uh, pretty severely uh, during the recent uh, uh, fire. Um, it's always been a, uh, you know, a, a great bottle of wine. It's one that we feel especially uh, uh, kind of invigorated about supporting now. Uh, the, the winery burned down, but the caves remain. Uh, many of the vineyards uh, remain, and many of the stocks of wine remain, so we're excited to pour it. I think that's something really interesting to point out to people, because a lot of times they think, okay, we saw this, these images, we think that there's no wine available, we can't drink wine from Napa, but even if, God there's forbid, still plenty of wine. there's still <laughs> plenty of wine here, believe me, um, but even if something did happen, like sp in this specific instance there still is wine available and one of the best ways you can do to support uh, them is to buy their wine absolutely and, and and I think a lot of people assume that the, the the fires destroyed the harvest I think in a lot of cases a lot of the fruit was already in uh, and even the fruit that was out there you know uh, uh, smoke can be really damaging earlier in the season it's almost less damaging uh, at the time of harv harvest because you can wash a lot of it off the fruit Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, I think I read a stat somewhere that 90 to 95 percent of the grapes in, in Napa Valley were already harvested at the time. Yeah, we, we had, um, uh, you know, a little bit of a warmer push right before the fires, which encouraged everybody to go out in the fields and, and harvest what they have. And um, and a lot of the smoke wasn't settling down. It was, you know, the breezes were coming through as I mean, the fires were caused by high winds. So the, the smoke was being carried out. And that, as Matt was saying, it uh, didn't have an opportunity to settle within the cellular structure as the grapes were forming, which is typically why you see such bad smoke taint and the, the, the smoke vintages um, that we've seen in the past. So there's, there's incredible optimism still for the vintage, and, and I wouldn't by any means take anybody's advice to write anything off. I think the moral of the story is the best way to support Napa is to get your butt down here, or if you can't get your butt down here, then pick up a bottle of wine and support local. A question I get all the time, and I'm going to ask you the question because then I'll just say this is my answer anytime someone asks me, what's your favorite bottle of wine or what's a good bottle of wine for under $30? I typically look to Italy for um, wines for under $30, something typically from um, south of uh, Italy and Sicily or, or um, some of my favorite wines come from the north in fact from uh, from Piedmont. I might point out that our entire retail selection is essentially $30 and under so we've got plenty of things that have been sort of expertly vetted yeah. uh, on our retail shelf. I love, uh, speaking of Italian wines, we've got Chianti Classico from Castella in Vila. We've got a great, uh, um, we've got great Frappato from Sicily. Uh, we've got things from the north of France that are 14 or $15 a bottle on our shelves that are fantastic. Sometimes wine under th wines under 30 are scary, but we've, we've done our homework and done a great job of putting uh, some tasty wines up. Yeah, I love that. Sometimes wines under 30 are scary. Yeah, sometimes wines under 10 are really scary. You only find out the next day after you finish them. Okay, you guys, let's pick up a glass and say cheers. What kind of cheers or toast do we all have? Do you have anything you say around here? Uh, cheers. Oh, we say cheers. Okay. Cheers to Napa. Cheers to Napa. Cheers to Napa. Drink some local wine, people.